This week on Sportsman TV, the goggle eye spawn, the Atchafalaya Basin. Come on, go with us. Today we're out here in the Chafalaya Basin. Um, we're fishing in the little bayous off the basin, finding some uh, cypress trees, fishing the, the stumps. Water's a little bit low today, so you have to kind of fish the, the grass beds that are dropping off, where the water drops off to a two, three feet. And uh, they seem to be biting pretty good on a beetle spinner and a tube jig underneath the cork or, or some hair jigs underneath the cork. Anything with a little crawfish pattern seems to work pretty good. Thinking he got into him. Another nice goggle eye. These, what happens is when the water gets high, when the crawfishing's good, the fish are all out there in the woods just like they're, where they're crawfishing at. And it's hard to get around, it's hard to get to them, and it seems like it scatters them out. But when that water starts to get right and it starts to draw, all those fish have been living for months, and we've been blessed the last couple of years with such high water that the, really the, there hadn't been a lot of good fishing. <laughs> and so now all those fish are being pulled into these channels. You know, and the basin is covered in, you know, dead end canals, oil pipelines, uh, of course all types of natural bayous and, you know, big lakes. And as that water gets, starts to pull down, it pulls all these fish in these places. And now they're accessible to a fisherman. Hook sets in the top part of the mouth with a little small bait because they swallow it, they don't feel it, no resistance. Oh, wrong species. Trash. Started this morning to try to get that junk out of the way quick. Another one of them red bellies. This right here is a perfect example of an Achafalai Basin goggle eye. Um, now as they get bigger, the eyes get to be more googly. These smaller ones, you don't, you don't see that as much, but uh, you can tell this is a male by the color. And one thing that is real distinctive on them, say compared to a brim or a bluegill, is their mouth. You know, their mouth is more exaggerated for their body. Like, kind of like a large mouth bass, you know, they got a, their mouth is bigger than their body. Of course, a goggle mouth's not the same. They actually have a lot of the same tendencies as a large mouth bass. A big time crawfish eater. I mean, they'll eat good sized perch. I mean, they're, uh, they're a very aggressive fish. I mean, you can flip a full-size flipping jig in on one of these cypress trees and one almost like the line. I mean, they, they eat. And, uh, but the, the other thing that I guess is so good about them, you know, the meat's a lot like eating a bluegill or a sacolay. They're that same. They're perfect table fare. Real clean. You know, really doesn't have a lot of taste. You know, it's like a meat's a little firmer than a sacolay, but uh, fine eating. And these are just, again, it's kind of what you're, you know, how the keeper size is, he just needs to be big as your hand. Over here at Bowie Outfitters, hunting and fishing is our passion. We can help you pick all the right gear for your next fishing trip. We spend time in the woods too, so we know what products to recommend when hunting season comes around. We understand the outdoors and what it takes to have success on your hunting and fishing adventures. So come on down to Bowie Outfitters and let us help get you going. Bowie Outfitters, everything outdoors. Get that starfish! If you want to be like these anglers, we might have a star winner, folks! Then you only need two things, a CCA star entry and a bit of luck. Because if you don't enter, you could miss out on over 500,000 in prizes, including a new Chevy Silverado, over 25 divisions, including a new bank fishing, ladies division, and Louisiana Sportsman's bonus prize of 10,000 in cash. Anyone can win, but you must have a star entry. Register today at CCAStar.com. 
The Parks family and our team has been handcrafting Blue Wave boats since 1992. Blue Wave's foundation is built on knowing what's important in every aspect that matters, from speed, quality, performance, and features built into every boat. Blue Wave boats are custom built with the highest standards, with everything you need to make your day on the water a success for generations to come. We specialize in building high quality, custom performance fishing boats. The original Sportsman Cool Breeze shirt has been greatly improved. This new version has a moisture activated cooling technology, which actually turns your sweat into cooling power. Ventilated mesh sides add extra breathability. It's UPF rated and antimicrobial. It comes in five different colors and is now also available in short sleeve. Get yours now at foursportsman.com. Sportsman, it's who we are. You know, one thing that happens in the fall of the year, that typically s signals those fish to feed again. And uh, we don't have falls like the rest of the country. A lot of time our fall is just a continue on of the, of the summertime. You know, the weather's still warm. Uh, but one thing that does happen regardless of temperatures is the shortening of the daylight period. Uh, the days get shorter in the fall. That tr is one thing that really triggers those fish to bite. So a lot of times we still have a lot of vegetation in the fall. Uh, we haven't had any winter to make the grass go away or what have you. But what'll happen in the fall, you can go back to those same places where you caught them in the summer, but rather than those fish being way back in the mats or way back in the grass beds, a lot of times in the fall, they'll move to that edge and go to feeding again. Um, the fall to me is similar to pre-spawn. Fish your baits a little faster, the water's still warm. I like something moving. Rage blade, a pure poison, a uh, spinner bait again, lipless crankbait's good in the fall. I swim a worm a lot. Bait fish are very important that time of year, whether it's shad, whatever lives in that area, they typically seem to get back on a fish base again, starting in the fall. And they're chasing. You know, that's one of the time of years you see them schooling and that type of deal. But it can be some really good fishing in the fall. I figure the water clarity was a little bit better. Uh, when it's a little bit clearer water, I like to go to a little small, small profile hook. I use this little 1 32nd ounce jig head. It's a real small profile short shank hook. You get a little bit less resistance. The fish seem to eat it up better. Um, you get good hook sets in the top rim of the mouth. You just gotta be careful. You catch about 10 fish. You might wanna retie. They'll kind of fray up the top of the line. That's the only drawback to going to a smaller hook. A bigger hook. It's a bigger bait, they can see the exposed hook a little bit more. When they're biting a little bit finicky, sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. Ta-da! There he is, pretty as a picture. They're our version of a tropical freshwater fish. I thought he was gonna jump for a second. Oh. Ooh, a nice one. They get it good too. Down the down his throat. Oh, the fishing's uh, been real good here. Um, low water. When you don't have any water in the deep marsh, they can't go away in the marsh anymore. It pulls them out to the deeper bias. It makes them more concentrated, a little bit easier to find. And just fishing structure, grass beds, drop-offs, any kind of area that's going to have a little bit of bait fish and uh, just fishing real slow, you know, bumping your baits off the bottom. But really what I try to look for is I start fishing when it gets about three and a half feet. Right now it's about two and a half feet. So it's extremely low, but when you can start catching at three and a half feet and it's falling, um, that tr that starts with your chinka pins or lake runners, like where I'm from, that's what we call them. But uh, after that, you can get the bass start coming out the marsh. Then you got the goggle eye and then sockele or crappy, like the northerners call them. Um, you can start wherever you find that mixed water where that clean water's coming out the bayou, mix them with that muddy water. You'll always find them sockele staged in those areas. I thought he was coming out of there then. I see him. Oh, come undone. He come undone. There he is. Teamwork. Thanks, That's all right. When, when they all mix together, when we're getting ready to eat, we won't know which one is which. Now, I do have a theory. Once I get real confident in a spot, I try not to leave it. 
and I've learned that it definitely works in my favor is that when you can get, start getting them to come out whatever grass or how they're at you keep getting at them getting at them you'll trigger them and it is amazing you might go by a normal person go by and fish it catch one or two fish and just leave and then you know like this to find a spot like this and just beat at it beat at it beat at it and all of a sudden for long you got 25 30 fish and you get some quality ones sometimes you got to work out those little smaller fish especially when i go cyclone fishing that's how i am if i can find a cypress tree especially in bio black where there's not many of them i'll sit there and i'll pound on that tree i'll pound on that tree and i'll keep going until eventually i got 50 60 fish this is what we call a little red belly perch as you can see on the bottom it's got the little red lines always got the little red eye um, on the end of the tail right here, it's, it's red. Kind of always got that grayish, bluish color, green up on top. They're little pretty, pretty little fish. They just don't get very big um, in these parts, but uh, very hyper aggressive fish. Um, easy to come and catch hundreds of these at a time if you got a worm. Oh, them's a nice one too. You can, that's a two, three pounder. You can tell by the sound of the, uh, oh. There he is. Love a nice one. See, they got that, some of them got that little red dot here on that back fin, it's pretty. Look at that big fish on in the back. <laughs> I got one in one hand, got one on the jig. I'm multitasking back here, dear. Here at Bowie Outfitters, we know that bow hunting is a year-round pursuit of perfecting your game. That's why we operate a full indoor archery range, stock our shelves with the best accessories on the market, and offer a service and repair shop. We carry top brands like Hoyt, Bowtech, PSE, Matthews, Bear, Barnett, Mission, Ten Point, and more. Bowie Outfitters, everything outdoors. are my straight king s11s get your own louisiana sportsman magazine for over 31 years your source for fishing and hunting information each month you will find stories by local experts in everything from bass to redfish to ducks deer to trout and turkey we've got incredible local information that you can use immediately to get more success outdoors you'll also enjoy monthly columns on cooking the latest lures gps locations shooting kayaks and much more have Louisiana Sportsman delivered to your house and safe. $24.99 gets you a full year of Louisiana Sportsman. To order today, visit louisianasportsman.com. This is Kyle. Kyle genuinely enjoys his job, sometimes. What Kyle really enjoys is fishing. That's why he logged onto lasaltwater.com to find a Louisiana charter captain. It was here in Louisiana that Kyle had the best fishing day of his life. Kyle's charter captain helped him catch the most fish he's ever caught, ever. So do what Kyle did. Find your charter captain on lasaltwater.com today. This is the, um, the main, one of the main areas that connects the um, northern part of the Atchafalaya Basin to the southern part um, where the, the lake is right here. And uh, so it has natural flowing water. Those bayous are draining up north and, and it naturally flows down here to the lake and uh, the goggle the perch, they're all getting pulled out of the main bayous up north and each of them are finding their nest and we're just fishing the cypress trees, the ones that are, that are holding a little bit of water. Um, 
that's tending to, to have the most fish. And well, you know, it's actually, even this has got a little color in it, but you know, still realistically, it's pretty clean. Now we've been in some, you know, that was gin clear, uh, kind of in a more of a dead end situation, not a dead end, but a place where the water wouldn't move as much. But you know, you feel like this water is, you know, there's some river water filtering through, uh, you know, through this. So it has, this has that perfect fishing color. Probably see a foot, foot and a half, you know, at the best. And it, it really seems like, you know, most fish species, you can catch them when it's gin clear, but if you got a little color, it does make them a little easier to catch because they can't see quite as well, you know. Well, this is how you decide what goggle eye to keep and which one to throw back. When they're numerous. Now let me stress that today, because they're numerous, this is how you pick. On other days, you pick till you get enough to, you know, be, how many you need. But so, about hand size. Too much hand showing. That's the problem. So he's going back. He'll be here next time. Well, you always want to make sure you might want to have a pair of sunglasses in case the guy in the back of the boat slings the fish at you for eye protection. Um, oh, your main thing is you want to have you a good little spinning rod. It's a, you use either a spin cast or spinning. I prefer the spinning reel. Um, you want to get you a good light action rod, something with a little bit of limberness to it. Um, I use a anywhere from six to eight pound test monofilament line. Get you a little, some little either slip on corks like I have here. They come with a little peg. You peg it in. The good thing about fishing these, and especially here in a basin, if you get stuck on uh, on a tree or something, that line is able to move. So you can reel up your line, pull it tight to the cork, and that cork will slide down to your bait, and it makes it easier to pop off. Um, the snap-on corks, the downside is when you do that, they're pretty much stuck and they'll fray your line up, kind of mess it up. And then you want to get you either a 132nd or 116 ounce jig head, little small short shank hooks, and any color tube jig will typically work. I prefer to use a little bit darker color with a chartreuse accent here in this kind of stained water and in the clear water. You know, you want to use something that maybe you can see through, kind of like a chartreuse colored bait or a blue and white typically works good. Oh bass. Ugh. I don't even want to touch that thing. Nasty. <laughs> One of my favorite ways to eat them is uh, eating the fish either fried whole or baking them in the oven whole. And the typical way to do that is you can either go to the store and get you a, a commercial bought scaler or you can use the old fashioned spoon which works just fine. You want to put your thumb down right here on the spoon, your finger behind it, and you can just kind of rake these scales back. They come off very easy. You want to come right up here against the bone. Make sure you get all the scales off. Once you get done with one side, you go ahead and flip it on over to this other side, and you just kind of do the same thing. Make sure that you got all the scales. You wash some scales off the fish. After you get done scaling, I like to come back with the knife just because it's got this sharp little blade right here and you can just kind of go up against the fins, make sure that you got right here on this back tail, a lot of people like to forget, and then same thing right here. See, I had missed a couple of them. Come back like that. After that, you wanna take, for safety reasons, put your hand in here. Wanna go underneath this fin right here, and you come right here. After you get done with the head, you can use that for catfish bait. When you, when you clean it, this is gonna be the gut section. You want to go ahead and you can stick your, I like to just stick my thumb in there. And when you stick your thumb in there, you can just pull it right on and out like that. We can tell that we got all the scales. I go to the preparation method. I like to take the knife and you come right here along the backbone and you make a little incision. You, don't, you go about a half an inch into the meat, all the way down to the tail. Then you flip the fish over you come back from the tail part and you want to get the knife right here on the side of this bone. What this does is when you go to fry that fish or bake that fish, however you like to prepare it, that fish is going to naturally want to curl up like this. It's going to get it away from the bone. You can eat that meat off the bone. And then to create a, a profile for allowing the seasoning in the fish, I like to make a couple incisions on each side like this and then one down the middle. 
After you catch so many fish every once in a while, I like to try to find out something that's a little bit different. So today we're gonna use this uh, Louisiana barbecue shrimp sauce mix. Um, it's uh, just two sticks of butter, um, half a cup of water, and then a half a cup of Worcestershire sauce. You mix that up in the bowl, you melt your butter a little bit, and then you roll around your fish in it, put it back in the pan. You got your oven on 350, and you bake it for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna get it prepared here. After you get this in the bowl, the Worcestershire sauce, the butter, and the water, you wanna stick it in the microwave for about a minute or so to soften that butter up to get your mixture right. You see all the different spices and all it's got in it. Make sure you get all that goodness in the, in the mix. Make sure that you get all the big clumps out. Even though this has a lot of seasoning on it, you just get it, you know, some season all, Tony Sachery, whatever you prefer. Just a good little mixture of seasoning. You want to season your fish lightly. So I just kind of dust them with a little bit of seasoning. And you can just kind of ladle that over the fish. Take a spoon and drip that over the fish like that. After we get finished putting this all over the fish, I like to add a little lemon juice. Now you can squeeze some lemon juice on it. If you don't like to lay the lemons on it, I like the way it tastes, so, and I like the presentation, so I like to lay at least one lemon on, each, on top of each fish. We're gonna put them in the oven at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Last thing I like to do for the last five minutes, I like to take it and turn it on the broil. Uh, turn your broil on high about 500 for the last five minutes. It gives that skin a good little crisp and a good crunch, add some flavor to the meal. Got the good bubbling going. As you can see, that skin crisped up just enough to where we didn't burn the fish. Bowie Outfitters is your one-stop shop for all types of outdoor cooking. Tailgating? We've got Bayou Classic Barbecue Pits and King Cooker Jambalaya Pots. If frying's your favorite, check out r &B Works Cajun Fryers and Cajun Injector Products to keep meat moist and flavorful. Black iron skillets are key in a southern kitchen, and Bowie carries a big selection of lodge cast iron, plus Bayou Classic Pots for your next crawfish boil. Come to Bowie Outfitters and let us get you cooking. Bowie Outfitters, everything outdoors. Put the cool in life. We put the cool in coolers. Arctic ice. Louisiana Sportsman Magazine. For over 31 years, your source for fishing and hunting information. Each month you will find stories by local experts on everything from bass to redfish to ducks, deer to trout and turkey. We've got incredible local information that you can use immediately to get more success outdoors. You'll also enjoy monthly columns on cooking, the latest lures, GPS locations, shooting, kayaks, and much more. Have Louisiana Sportsman delivered to your house and safe. $24.99 gets you a full year of Louisiana Sportsman. To order today, visit louisianasportsman.com. Managing wildlife is hard work, and Buckbuster's Seed Company understands. That's because we're hunters too. We've tested our seeds with science and developed a proven formula for attracting deer and turkeys. Unsure about what to plant on your food plot? Try our basic fall mix for hunting season success and our premium seed mix for year-round nutrition. Buckbuster's Seed Company, the most complete and cost-effective seed mixes on the market. They're chasing this gator tail around, and they're nice ones. <laughs> I find if you own, if you have a gator tail, you just pitch right behind it because everything trails it. Alligator come out looking for it. Ooh, that's a nice one. You know, honestly, realistically, you can fish like this pretty much in the whole state from the north to the south. You know, I grew up fishing in the northern part of the state. You know, catching them off cypress trees, the same deal. Uh, I, I would say probably number-wise, the basin's hard to beat because it's got such a high fish number and it's so vast, but 
man, the whole state, every river system, the Red, the Washita River, you know, old cypress tree sloughs that are scattered all over the Delta. Today, they're really biting artificial good, but they'll bite a worm, a live worm, you know, a cricket. That's funny. We used to take a broom and get a baby crawfish out of a mud hole. And let me just tell you this, if there's whatever the biggest one is, you drop it on one of them trees and it's automatic. All oh, them cypress knees in there, there ought to be a freaking swarm of them. Them old black ones. Oh God. I just wish I had a dollar for every gator tail I've seen today. I mean, we have not seen anything but gator tails on every boat that's, uh, that's passed us today. Right wing, I can't remember, man, hooked up in the front. Ooh, oh, and that oh, one's even got a, oh. now, now that's a male. Now show him the difference between a male and a female. Now look at this, this one actually has. No, 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 it's a male. Just don't even say what it is. Just say this is, now we know, that's what a big male looks that's like right there. That's what a big male looks like, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> For a good time, Try the goggle eye spawn. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV.